Hi, I'm Khalil Thomas, president of the Media Club here at Bergen Community College. Throughout the semester, we'll be presenting a variety of programs. Our focus is to inform how well to entertain you. We hope you enjoy the show. One day, me and my friends were driving down this road, and we stopped for a second, and there was this woman in the road, just in a white dress. I don't know, we tried to look at her, but we got all scared, turned around, we have no idea. A lot of people have been talking about it. I just wanted to find out about it. A year ago, a bunch of my friends and I went to an abandoned asylum called Greystone. It was just terrifying. There were uh, shadows and noises. There were papers everywhere of uh, patients that had been there. We were terrified. It was really dark. Um, there were six, six, six six all over the walls. It was just like, really satanic graffiti. We were really scared. I don't even know if it's there anymore. Okay, uh, we went to see, I was in Seacoast once and uh, I was with my friends and they said they, th they heard about this thing. It's supposed to have, it's supposed to be a chimney, it looks like a guy standing on a roof, so we went to check it out. And it's really stupid because it's just, it just looks like a square guy. It doesn't look like a real guy at all. And then uh, there's this thing in Nutley. It's supposed to be a statue of Mary with uh, real eyes, but we couldn't find it. So, mm -hmm. if anybody finds it, let me know. Well, the one that stands out is one in Newark. That if you're driving through and there's some bright lighting going on to it, you see the white woman. <laughs> you know how many people have swerved past the white woman? Every drunk prom date that has ever driven through Brantford Park. Every drunk kid. Westminster Hall, huh? Well, um, from what I've heard when I was younger about the ghost story um, entailed with Westminster Hall was that a young girl many, many years ago was dating a man of another race or culture and she was madly in love with him and when they approached her father about getting married, he was simply against it, uh, in fact, it denied her of it. And she was so heartbroken and, and distraught that she climbed up into the bell tower of the church that she belonged to and committed suicide by hanging herself. Now it's said that if you walk by the bell tower on the anniversary or of her death or the night that she committed suicide, you can see uh, a shadow of a figure moving around up there, or possibly the shadow of her dead body swinging back and forth. Yeah. And me and my friends we were driving down this road in Totowa, I think it's called Annie's Road. It was like on a Saturday night. Uh, it was like around, I don't know, like one in the morning or something. And we drove down really fast, and my friends said he could have swore that he saw like a girl walking up the side of the road. None of us saw it, so then we turned around, we drove back, but then again, we didn't see it. But then a bunch of other people said they've seen the same thing, so uh, I don't really know, you know what he saw. I mean, they were really drunk, so that might have had something to do with it, but I don't know. Urban myths and legends have surrounded us for ages. In fact, they're right here in New Jersey. I'm Nando of the Media Club, and we recently sent out a crew to investigate some of New Jersey's creepiest sites, from abandoned villages to a haunted road. We sought to capture the truth about New Jersey's frightening and most bone-chilling myths. Welcome to the world of the unknown. Our first myth begins with the legend of Annie's Road. It has been said that this road is haunted by the ghost of a girl who stood up on prom night. As she was walking home, she was struck and killed by a reckless driver. Supposedly, her spirit protects all who dare to walk down it. On several occasions, drivers have reported seeing a ghostly apparition of a girl walking down the guardrail. Some say she appears to all who have speed as to warn them of what happened. Allegedly, Annie's father returns to the site every year to paint the guardrail red in memory of her death. Legend has it that Annie's 
body rests in the very same graveyard that is located alongside this road. Our next myth leaves us in a smelly cemetery at the site of a young boy's grave. On top of the headstone rests the statue of an infant. This child, less than a year old, is known as Little Willie. Residents have reported hearing cries of a small child late at night and have mentioned sightings of a young figure wandering through the graveyard. The myth says that if you touch the statue's head, you will mysteriously fall ill, very much like the way Little Willie did before he died. Built in 1853 and part of New Jersey's Historical Society, Acorn Hall is a 150-year-old Victorian mansion. Supposedly, weird happenings have occurred in this house, none of which can be accounted for. According to the neighbors, strange noises can be heard coming from the basement when it is uninhabited. However, the most startling phenomenon reported was a ghostly figure of a woman walking slowly down the main staircase. Footsteps along with the crinkling of her dress are the usual sounds associated with the apparition. Some say she was wearing a taffet dress with a bonnet and carries a wicker bag on her wrist. Many times, persons inside the house will notice the repetitive sound of a porch swinging as it moves back and forth. Oddly enough, there is no porch swing. The woman has been sighted several times and is thought to be the ghost of Louise Shermanhorn, wife of Dr. Shermanhorn, who was the first to own the house. Just off one of New Jersey's main highways lies a deserted road, abandoned houses, and scattered debris. This string of vacated homes makes up the legend of Demon's Alley. Apparently, sometime in the early 1980s, a seemingly ordinary man moved into town. According to the locals, odd occurrences began to take place shortly after the man's arrival. Residents blame the town's youth. The newcomer decided to take matters into his own hands and call a town meeting in the basement of his home. Little did the community know that this man had been a cult leader in the Midwest and had gathered his followers together for a brutal massacre of most of the town's people. Cult members were never caught, and no one dares to speak of the incident and deny it never really happened. Our final myth encompasses the tale of Westminster Hall. More than a hundred years old, Westminster Hall is a church on New Jersey's college campus. Legend has it that many years ago, a young girl and devoted congregant of the church found herself with child. When she named the minister as the father, the church members ridiculed her in disbelief. She was so distraught that she hung herself in the church bell tower. In order to honor the young girl, her family had a stained glass window with her face painted on it. The stained glass window was then placed with several other windows on the second terrier of the bell tower. Many years later, historians started to notice hints of deterioration in the stained glass windows and decided to have them removed for restoration purposes. When taking the windows out, all remained in stable condition except for one. Upon removing the last stained glass, the one commemorating the girl's face, it shattered into pieces. Whether you believe in the haunting tale of a young girl, the curse of a little boy's sickness, 
or unexplained paranormal phenomena, the truth is, is that these sites you have just seen really do exist. What's even scarier is that they can be found right here in the state of New Jersey. Fact or fiction? These stories are what you make of them. Be sure to join us next time to another presentation from Bergen Community College's Media Club. I'm Nando Silva, and remember, never underestimate the powers of the unknown.